thing whip up there. Come on, Mr. Trout. I want to show y'all one of these beautiful Charlotte Harbor fish. There's a fish. There's Come a on, baby. That's a, that's a nice trout, I think. Yeah, it's a trout. Yeah, there's a little troutster. That's a good way to start the day, Mr. Vandermark. Yeah, it is. Come on, hang on, hang on. Hold on, I'd rather not put him in the net if I don't have to. He's hooked good. I want to definitely take care of these fish here this year, especially all these trout. Well, welcome to this episode of Addict to Fishing. We're fishing here in Port Charlotte. Got my old partner, Captain Tad Vandermark. He moved up here from the Keys, and uh, he's definitely learning this area right now. Let me show you this trout. Charlotte Harbor, this clear water here. Oh, that's cold. Just absolutely grows beautiful trout down here. Old Captain Tad moved up here and has figured these guys out. And that's one beautiful trout, Mr. Vandermark. That's a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sandwich. Well, we're gonna see if we can let this guy go. Ate that little Miradine, one of my favorite color Miradines right there. It's a little shad, greenback. Looks just like the greenies that are all around here. And off he goes. Maybe you can book somebody and get him down here and let him catch that one again. Hey, y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more addictive fishing from Port Charlotte. My old partner, Tad Vandermark. Be right back. Well, we got one thing we're doing on the show this year, Tad. It's called the Fin Situation. Since Fins makes four different types of spectral fiber, right? You know, we kind of do it a situational type braid fishing line. So, what is our situation today? Well, we got a northeast north wind about 15. It's about 60 degrees, and we got an incoming tide all day. It's going to be pretty good. We I think we started at a point. Three this morning or a point two and we're gonna at go up 45 degrees we started yeah <laughs> we were talking to a guy at the ramp we were putting in this morning and the guy's like no I didn't even think I had ice all over my boat this morning I can't tell you how many times I've had that you know you get down to the boat ramp you step on your boat and next thing you know you're looking up at the stars or seeing stars and what I got on here today I, I'm using the original PRT what do you got on there wind tamer wind tamer so we'll see who gets wind knots and who doesn't <laughs> oh, there's a fish right here. There nice. you go. Get him, Sean. Oh, yeah. Good fish. Trout? Yeah, big trout. Nice. You got a buddy over there. I don't know if he's all that big. No, he looked bigger when his <laughs> mouth came up at first. <laughs> Cold weather trout, brother. Or is it a blue fish? No, it's a trout. <laughs> That's a beauty. You know, for some reason, these trout over, I guess it's the clean water, but these trout over here are so pretty. Look at that fish. Good job, brother. Thank you, man. Good job. They're here. It's just really cold, you know? Look at that fish. I'm gonna be as gentle as I can. Unfortunately, in the Mosquito Lagoon, we lost quite a few this year, but man, you know, everybody always asks, what's my favorite fish to catch? And every time I always have to refer back to these guys because they're just, so much fun to fool with plastic. Get on out of here, dude. We're gonna be real careful with you guys this year. Nice, man. You know, I'm just gonna take a little time to warm up. Uh, you know, you caught a nice one, or I caught a nice one, and about 20 minutes later, hopefully we'll get another one. So let's give it a shot, buddy. Let's keep going. It don't take Tad long to figure out any place to fish. And if y'all ever get the chance to come and book him down here, you know, by the, by the time this show airs, he's gonna have this place wired. Get me one now. So when it's cold like this, all you really want to do is slow down your presentation, imitate small baits, because they don't want to do a lot of traveling to eat their food. So the more you can make a small bait look injured and have that fish come over and eat it, you know, that's, that's the name of the game. So just try to make it look injured. And a lot of things, times I say in my seminar, you ever had an aquarium and watch a dead fish or a fish dying in your aquarium, how it goes up, comes down real slow, comes down, goes back up real quick, comes down real slow. Just try to imitate that as natural as you can as a bait dying and you produce fish on artificial. The greatest thing in the world. <laughs> oh, there he is right there, All bro. All right, good. Oh, this one feels good. Now you can always tell when a, you get a big trout they got a nickname yellow mouth and you see that mouth come up and shake like this one right out here and if they're really good size all you see is that yellow mouth shaking. He's not too bad. 
Then again, when it's 45 degrees out, when you start and it's starting warming up to 50, any fish you get is a good fish. One thing too with trout, especially if you're gonna be releasing them, wet your hands prior to, prior to grabbing them because they have such little tiny scales on here. And if you grab them with dry hands, it's just like licking a, <laughs> licking a, a what is it, a uh, flagpole in the wintertime. Your hands will <laughs> stick to it. And when you pull it off, you'll see that you got a lot of scales on your hands. But uh, what a nice little trout. Three trout, three keepers. And off he goes. That was a nice one. About worked this whole shoreline down. That was a little schoolie trout. And I tell you what, what I mean by a schoolie trout is that they hang in large schools a lot of times this time of year. So once you get in an area where you're catching a, a keeper trout, just pepper the area really hard and cover every little pothole that you can find. Because if you find one in the area, a lot of times you're gonna find a lot more in the same area. And uh, I think it's time to say hey to the sponsors. So y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more addictive fishing from Port Charlotte, Florida. Let's go then. There he is. That's the red. No, that's a big trout. Let me get my rod out of the way. Come on, fish. There's got to be one in here. It's perfect bottom. There's some swimming right here, right here. What do we got? Close, far? Yeah. Up, up there on the top? Yeah. Come right over. Come on. Right in there. There he is. There that's he a is. red. No, that's a big trout. Nice trout. Nice trout. Let me, get, let me get my rod out of the way. Come on, baby. That's the kind we've been looking for right there. Right there in that hole, baby. He's about the size of that first one you had. Cool. Not bad at all. He's got his mouth pinned shut with it. There goes another one right underneath is it. it. Yeah. Oh, come on, big boy. That is a good sized trout for Charlotte Harbor. Man, look at the sun coming out for you guys to show them how beautiful this fish is. There. They are tearing that little mirror dean up. That looks a lot like all the little bait fish that's around here is the reason I'm throwing it. I always say match the hatch or imitate the bait that's around in the area. And you will produce the predator fish that are feeding on that bait at the time. There's another one right oh, here. Oh, you got one? Yeah. Well, cool beans. One thing about a trout, when they start getting up about this size right here, about 90% of their diet goes to other food fish. And that's the reason these little two fangs right here get really, really long. I'll let this one go. Get him back in the water and I'll show you Tad's here. They've probably got the same two fangs sticking out. But what those fangs do is enable the, the fish to, come on. Come on, oh, he just got off. Anyway, what those fangs do they enable that trout, when they come up and grab the bait, the fangs are kind of, you know, like fangs. They, they stick backwards and towards the fish's throat. So anything that they get those fangs into, a lot of the time, the bait's not gonna get away. And what this bait here resembles here in Charlotte Harbor is a scale. Oh, I got a good one. Uh-oh. Well, I'll show you that one when Chad gets it in. But what this bait right here resembles is a scaled sardine, thread fin herring. Chad's got another one on. Ow, ow, ow. Ow. Man, those mirror lure hooks are sharp. I'll show you this guy. He's probably got those fangs, yep, just like I was talking about. And we're using pretty much what they call hard plastics today. Look at that guy. That's nice. That is a nice trout. See those fangs I'm talking about? How'd you like to be a little mullet? <laughs> and seeing this guy come at you. The sun comes out and that purple shows, the greens, the blacks, the silver. Hey, it's just a beautiful, beautiful fish. And quite tasty, too. But we're not keeping these guys today. We're gonna let y'all come catch them. Get on out of here. We need to move forward about 25, 30 feet to that next pothole. Okay. Oh! 
Oh, there was a good one. Oh, I might yank it out of my hand. That's a good shot there, bro. Is it? Yeah. It's better. Not too bad. It about yanked it out of my hands, though. Come in, dude. You know what's cool? Every fish we've caught today, Tad, has been a has been a keeper. We definitely have our limit by now. Come here, dude. I don't need a hook in this big deal. Oh, Tad got him one too. That seemed like a pretty good fish there. Get this guy off and show him to you while Tad's fighting his. Look at these spots. That is got better. This one's better. And I'm gonna let this one go. Oh, there's through. another one with him bigger. Is there? Yeah, he was. I don't know where he went. That was pretty. Show you this one real quick. Come on up, Tad. This one's got a nice yellow mouth, like I was telling you. I'll show you this guy's mouth here. Good job, Tad. Let me show you this guy's mouth, how yellow it is. And when they get up in size, that mouth gets all nice and yellow. And when they get to be, you know, this, this size here, they come up and shake their head, kind of like this on top, trying to shake that lure out of their mouth. And you hear them called yellow mouth, just from that right there. Is it yellow or is it yellow? Look at the spots on this guy. Gotta be one of the most beautiful fish that swim in the water. There's purple, green, black, white, silver, all sorts of colors of these guys. Get him out of here. And off he goes. Well, I'm about ready for another one of these. And if you notice, we've shut our layers now. It's getting nice and warm. And the warmer it's getting, the more fish we're catching. So, what can I say? Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back. With Captain Tad, Charlotte Harbor, and some more sea trout. Hopefully, a red or two. Let's go then. There he is right there, brother. Oh, nice trout. Nice trout. Right out of that pothole, bro. <laughs> On today's Rig It Right segment, I'm gonna show you what I was throwing out there today to catch these trout. I was throwing a Miradine, it's made by Mirror Lure, and it's a suspending twitch bait. And all you're trying to do with a suspending twitch bait is mimic an injured fish out there. You wanna give it a couple little twitches and just let it float and sink down. Remember, all you're trying to do is make it look like an injured bait and the trout will come up and eat it. I was using Seaguar, 20 pound test fluorocarbon leader, and if you're using fluorocarbon leader out there, it's gonna improve your chances a lot, especially in Port Charlotte or anywhere where you have real clear water because what happens with the Seaguar, it actually absorbs the sunlight and it disappears in the water. So basically what you're doing, you're fooling the fish. I was using 20 pound test and I was using the original PRT by Fins. And Tad, he was throwing the Wind Tamer, also made by Fins. Just different situation line for the situation that we had out there that day. It was windy, it would stop blowing, it was windy. So we had to change it up a little bit and both lines worked perfectly for the situation we were in. I was using the seven foot nine signature series Wright McGill rod with a 4,000 reel. Basically the same exact trout rigs I've used my whole life, using twitch baits, using jerk baits, twitch, pause, twitch, pause, and let it sit and you're gonna catch fish. Remember one thing, every season starts right here at Dick's. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. There's approximately a ratio of two to one, two males to one female in one of the tanks, and three males to one female in the other tank. So there's 28 fish in one, 21 fish in the other. Well, we're in the feeding tanks now. We're with Matt Wesley here at Moat Marine, and uh, we got some lovely little shrimp here we're gonna toss in the tank and we're gonna see what happens. He says it's like an explosion, so. We feed the broodstock a mixture of three different frozen feeds. They get 50% of their diet shrimp, and then 25% of it's a thread herring, which is a local herring species, and then the other 25% of it is squid. Fish, especially species like snug, typically are seasonal spawners. So what we do is we actually give them a season in the room. So they will have a winter season, they'll have a spring season, and they'll have a summer season which once they spawn. It's awfully hot and humid in here. The water is 30 degrees Celsius, so it's close to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's, 
It's pretty warm. Yeah. <laughs> Here at Moat Aquaculture Park is the only place that's ever been able to actually even get snook to reproduce in tanks. We're very grateful to anyone, no matter what they can do. It's basically you're helping uh, to adopt a fish, you know, helping to uh, make this happen so that we can put one more fish out in the water. We're doing slow with lots of flashes. So these fish don't have to run very far to eat it. And it's paying off. You're seeing the result. There he is right there, brother. There we go. Oh, nice trout. Nice trout. Right out of that pothole, bro. <laughs> when they do that right on top, you know they're a good fish. That's probably the biggest trout I've ever got in Charlotte Harbor right here. Hopefully we get him to the boat. Look at that fish. Nice. Good call, Tad, coming here. That's the you one. Want me to grab him, or you want to grab him? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll grab him. I'll, yeah. That's all right. He's not hooked very well. Come here, dude. Come here. I've touched him, so he's considered landed. Ooh, almost got me a treble hook. Man, I'm gonna say, why don't you use your fray bill, Blair? Because I like grabbing them. <laughs> That's got to be the biggest trout I've ever got out of Port Charlotte, Dad. This fish has got me shaking like a buck sitting on a tree stand does. Get on out of here. Yeah, yeah there we go. Oh, oh, oh. Easy, buddy. Easy, easy, easy. Now that fish is fat. Look how fat that fish is. That's a good one, huh? That's what we came for, buddy. That is definitely the ones we we're coming for right there. What a pretty fish. That is nice. Look at the yellow in his mouth. It's a big old thing. How do you like to be a mullet and have this guy breathing down your neck? He's got two nice ones. Look at that. What a fish. Man, I love trout. They love them in Louisiana, too, don't they? Look at that fish. What, 26 inches? At least. Probably right around there, yeah. 26 inches. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. Oh, I'm gonna let you grow up and make lots of babies. Tad, <laughs> brother, I'm glad you moved up here. Me too, man. Definitely it's been great. Glad you yeah, moved. definitely. Hey, if y'all ever get the chance to come up here and do do this with Tad, he'll put you on the fish. Ain't no doubt about it. He's only been here for a few months. We pre-fished here for years on the FLW and the Red Cup and the IFAs, all the tournaments out there. So. He knows where the fish are here, so if y'all get a chance to come down and book him. What's the name of your charter business now? A Tad Moore Charter. A Tad Moore Charter. You can catch a Tad Moore fish with Tad Vandermark. So, book him down here in Port Charlotte. Y'all can come out and have a, just a, a ball down here catching sea trout. We're going to see if we can do some other fish, but uh, we'll see what happens. Till Thank next, you, buddy. Till next it. week, what can I say? We'll see you. Chaka chaka. <laughs> Check out more footage from this show by logging on to AddictiveFishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. One thing we're doing a little bit different with these twists. Is... That's a good one. Is that pretty or what? <laughs>